Grief is the stuff of life. A life without grief is no life at all. But regret is a prison. Some part of you which you deeply value lies forever impaled at a crossroads you can no longer find and never forget. You may have noticed a certain reticence in our man. It's true that he does dangerous underwater work for high pay, but it's also true that he's afraid of the depths. Well, you say, he has overcome his fears. Not a bit of it. He is sinking into a darkness he cannot even comprehend. Darkness and a mobilizing cold. And with those really cheery opening quotes, I welcome you to my channel on this day. I am William Gwynn and I will be reviewing The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy. Of course, he is the author of a huge array of renowned and respected works, but his most recent, before The Passenger, was The Road and he released that in 2006. And since then, it has become one of the most respected books of the last century. And then 16 years later, at the tail end of 2022, he released the Passenger. 1980, past Christian, Mississippi. It is three in the morning when Bobby Weston zips the jacket of his wetsuit and plunges from the boat deck into darkness. His dive light illuminates the sunken jet, nine bodies still buckled in their seats, hair floating, eyes devoid of speculation. Missing from the crash site are the pilot's flight bag, the plane's black box, and the tenth passenger. But how? A collateral witness to machinations that can only bring him harm, Weston is shadowed in body and spirit, by men with badges, by the ghost of his father, inventor of the bomb that melted glass and flesh in Hiroshima, and by his sister, the love and ruin of his soul. And just from that blurb, you can instantly tell that the passenger is a story composed of many different plot lines coming together, weaving in with different elements to create a complex story. We have the mystery of this missing 10th passenger. We have the intergenerational guilt that Bobby Weston carries around with him. We have this vague relationship between Bobby Weston and his sister and so, so much more. Cormac McCarthy does a brilliant job of drip feeding little pieces to the puzzle that you fit together as this story goes on that makes this so engaging engaging and a very powerful story and at the core in my belief anyway it is a real exploration of the human spirit but also the relationship between love guilt and regret this is a book that feels far more introspective and intimate than what i've read by cormac mccarthy before and what he is generally known for he i've read the road no country for men and blood meridian which are arguably his three most famous and renowned works. And as I said, this feels far more intimate. And that's not a bad thing. It does feel very different. It's a unique story. He's not just regurgitating what he's done before. But on the other side of the coin, it has that certain, I'm not sure how you define it, McCarthiness that makes it clear and distinctive that he is the author. The raw examination of the human condition, the constant presence of death and the theme and deconstruction of the idea of manifest destiny are still prevalent and they are themes that Cormac McCarthy has engaged with across probably all of his works or what I've heard anyway that's what he does and they are present here as well so as I said it is still very clearly a McCarthy work but it has an extra element to it as well which makes it very unique and I think this would be very interesting especially to those who have followed uh, Cormac McCarthy's previous works but even if this is the first book you read by him I'd say it's far more accessible than say Blood Meridian and so yep yeah, this is a book that I think many people could be interested in and many people could really enjoy. I mean I say enjoyable but that enjoyable is a complex word okay I mean this is a book that is deeply deeply sad and tragic there is moment after moment event after event that is just really sad and that means that it's not enjoyable, but then at the same time, it is enjoyable because it's such a memorable, impactful, thought-provoking book. So yeah, it's not enjoyable how you normally think of it, but it's still a book that I highly recommend picking up. And I think that you have a... See, have a good time doesn't feel right either. I'm going to struggle to find the right word. 
in the passenger, we follow two POVs. We follow Bobby Weston and then his sister, Alice Weston. And it probably, uh, I think it far more heavily leans on Bobby Weston's side of things, probably 70-30 split. Um, I can't give an exact percentage, but around that. But still, Alice is a very prevalent character and they're... POVs, the chapters of them are very, very different. There is a huge contrast between the writing styles and the themes and how the scenes play out as well and how events unfold. And at first, I think that can be a bit jarring. It was to me being thrown into the deep end, especially in that kind of introductory chapter. But I urge you to push forward with it because one of the biggest payoffs of The Passenger is as I said earlier, piecing this puzzle together and you see that the answers to all the questions you have are really reflected in the writing style and the choices and the authorial voice that Cormac McCarthy uses depending on which sibling he is following. And I absolutely love that when you kind of have that revelation, that epiphany, those answers fall into place. You think, oh, well, the answer was there all along and it's enforced and enhanced by the writing style. And I love it when writers do that. It is a fine line because writers can sometimes do that too much where it's kind of forcing it down your throat. But Cormac McCarthy does it in a way where where it is very apparent and powerful. It's not obvious in the sense of always doing it for that reason. So there is that kind of extra layer of engagement uh, to the passenger and all of Cormac McCarthy's books really. Why is he making this um, authorial choice? Why is he changing his style in this way? Because he is a genius. There's no other way to say it. He is an absolute genius. That's why most authors spend their life trying to hone their craft and create one authorial voice and style that they can do brilliantly. Whereas basically every single book Cormac McCarthy writes, he does a brilliant job in a com and he feels like a completely different writer whilst feeling this like... Cormac McCarthy throughout them all as well. He's got that indefinable quality about him. But as I said, it's really that kind of prose really falling into place, enhancing every element of storytelling. It really comes through and shines and the dialogue and the characters are so vivid and well realised. And that is a huge strength of this book. I think Cormac McCarthy usually has quite small casts and in the passenger he branches out a bit more where it's not huge but there's quite a few characters where a lot of the passenger is dialogue and conversations playing out between a POV and then the characters around them and I thought that was very interesting Cormac McCarthy does a brilliant job with dialogue and really showing characters through conversations and because of that it really pushes forward this conversational raw tone with the reader where we feel like we are just chatting to these characters and the power in that is just it's really utilized and Cormac McCarthy does a brilliant job of reaping the benefits of this more conversational tone but in a book that is not light-hearted or uplifting but he manages to make these conversations whilst they feel real he makes them engaging as well so often it's really hard to do dialogue I find and authors fall into that kind of the pitfall and the mistake of only having dialogue that plays right into the main plot, but Cormac McCarthy allows us to kind of weave in and out of the story where he crafts these characters by having kind of slice of life conversations, but then there's little bits and snippets that fall more into the plot and the themes that kind of the through lines of the story, which we see from beginning to end really grow, such as those three things I mentioned earlier, kind of the mystery of that missing pasture, the intergenerational guilt and this relationship between Bobby Weston and his sister. And as I said, a lot of this book is a puzzle. It's about you piecing the pieces, piecing the pieces together to fulfill it and get those answers. And as I said, there is a huge payoff with that. And the characters and the prose are just really beautifully crafted and utilized to enhance every element of what I've discussed. The Passenger is not your classic journey into the West, which Cormac McCarthy has often dabbled with in the past. This is a journey into the deep as perhaps reflected in Bobby Weston's diving. Um, this is a journey into the depths of the world, of the human spirit, of our purpose on this planet. It's very philosophical, but it's, again, not jarring. Cormac McCarthy does not go on huge rants of philosophy. Every few pages, there was just a, a line that just wowed me and blew me away because it's so poignant and powerful and thought-provoking and I love that Cormac McCarthy he often displays the kind of mindsets and the values of these characters and he, he doesn't say whether he agrees with them or not we're showing so many different viewpoints and perspectives to look at the world that it's up to us to kind of mull over them and it's a book that really it requires a lot of engagement from your part but that's something I really love as a reader because it really 
kind of brings forth that immersiveness and makes me feel like I'm engaging and I feel more attached to a read when you, you're not just given all the answers. You're not told that this, this and this is the right answers and you must believe that to carry on with the story. It's one where it's fine if you disagree with the characters. It's fine if you agree with them. And it really creates that element where it's like with there with the characters, just a silent spectator listening and taking it in and kind of having our own reactions. And it's very visceral and vivid read in that way. And I think that Cormac McCarthy kind of enhances this with sparse prose, which leaves a lot to the imagination. But as I said, every few pages or so, there'll be a little f flourish of beautiful language, which is so vivid. And as I said, it really crafts that incredible imagery, which lasts in the mind. I wrote down so many quotes as I was going through this. As I said, Cormac McCarthy is a genius and he shows us time and time again, but not in a show-offy way. It's in a way that enhances the story. And it's another way that shows the passenger just a great story. I think it's this is one that will not click with everyone, but it's one that I'd highly recommend everyone pick up. I'd say don't just read the first chapter. Read the first, I'd say, 40, 50 pages. And then I'd say by then you will know whether this is a book for you or not. Because sometimes I recommend books that I think most people will really, really enjoy. And sometimes I say, push on, it will click with you, I think. But this is one where, push on beyond that initial chapter. But if it's not clicked with you after those first 30, 40 pages, I don't think it's going to be a read for you. And that's because this is a very distinctive authorial style that Colin McCarthy has gone for. This is not the most accessible read. It is not the most kind of open to all read this is one that it engages with very specific themes in a very specific and unique way and that will click with many people it clicked with me and it won't click with others that's why the passenger it's got kind of mixed reviews it's a kind of a book that it seems like people either love it or hate it and luckily i fall into the love it category and this is a book that it was written with a kind of twin novel next to it, Stella Maris. I've not read Stella Maris yet. So, yep, that is The Passenger. And that is Stella Maris, a lot smaller. And that kind of follows more with Alice Weston, who, as I said, is the second POV in this book. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading Stella Maris. And I hear that when you've read that, it really impacts your experience on The Passenger as well. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Perhaps I'll do a review on the channel. It depends if people are interested. But everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. But I actually enjoyed it. Not what I said earlier where it's really sad. But um, yeah, this is a deeply sad and engaging and impactful story that I have no doubt will linger in my mind for the years to come. And it is, if nothing, memorable. And so, as I said, I highly recommend this to everyone. I really hope that you do pick it up. Hopefully this, this review has piqued your interest. Do let me know if you've picked it up already, if you will pick it up, or if you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But as I said before, thank you so much for watching and stay safe.